In this video, let's talk about conditions that affect the ovaries. So primary ovarian insufficiency will occur in patients that are less than 40 years old and have a high FSH, which indicates ovarian failure because ovaries produce estrogen. So if their ovaries are no longer producing estrogen, that kicks back to your HPA access. You're going to have more GnRH and a lot more FSH being produced. So these patients will be less than 40 years old and present with secondary amenorrhea. Some risk factors for this are Turner syndrome because they have their streak ovaries, fragile X. Pelvic radiation or history of chemotherapy can also cause primary ovarian insufficiency. So again, on labs, they'll have high FSH and low estradiol. Ovarian hyperthicosis. This is when you have virilization in postmenopausal females, and they might also have signs of insulin resistance, and then they'll have bilateral enlarged ovaries. Ovarian torsion will present with sudden onset unilateral pain in the pelvic area. Patients will usually also have nausea, vomiting symptoms, and then a palpable adnexal mass. So with torsion, the ovary like twists on itself, so you're worried about blood flow to the area. You want to do ovarian Doppler flow to see, and if there is low blood flow or no blood flow to the area, then you want to go for surgery immediately. And some risk factors for this are, you know, women of just a reproductive age, and sometimes infertility treatment can also cause it because you're really stimulating the ovary, or if you have some sort of cancer in the ovary, that can also serve as a cause for why it might twist on. So ruptured ovarian cyst also occurs on the sudden onset, and it's usually after strenuous activity, possibly after sexual intercourse. Patients can have free food in their pelvis. They'll present with abdominal rigidity. They might have rebound and guarding, so hemoperitoneum signs. And if they're also unstable along with these physical exam findings, you want to send them for emergency surgery. Tumor marker for ovarian cancer is CA125. For pancreatic cancer, it's CA199. Epithelial ovarian carcinoma, so this will present with adnexal masses, weight loss, bloating, early satiety, and abdominal distension. And on ultrasound, you're going to have like ascites, thick septations, solid complex masses. So whenever you have something malignant with ovary, you're going to see these septated masses on ultrasound. And then some protective factors for ovarian cancer are being on OCPs. Like we said, OCPs decrease the risk of ovarian cancer and endometrial cancer, but it can increase your risk for cervical cancer and also being pregnant. So being on OCPs and being pregnant reduces the amount of ovulatory cycles a woman goes through and that can, that's a protective factor. So let's say you find out you have epithelial ovarian carcinoma or any sort of ovarian cancer during pregnancy. You want to operate in the second trimester. This holds true also for even like thyroid malignancies, which is in another video you don't want to operate in the first or third trimester, you should take care of it in the second trimester. A tubal ovarian abscess. So this will look like a complex multi-cystic mass on ultrasound. And of course, an abscess, you're going to present with a fever, leukocyte count, um, thinking of a high inflammatory marker like CRP. And for this, you want to treat with azithromycin and ceftriaxone, which are also treatment for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. This usually occurs when patients are going through infertility treatment because they're hyperstimulating their ovaries with more hormones. But when this occurs, they're going to have high VEGF and having high VEGF creates more vascular permeability and capillary leakage. So this will cause the patients to have third spacing. They can also present with nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, um, and they'll also have bilateral enlarged ovaries, the multiple follicles, right? Um, because the multiple follicles are there since they're being stimulated more. Now, fecal lutein cysts are going to present with bilateral cystic masses, and fecal lutein cysts can occur after you have have a hydatiform mole, so from the excess beta HCG, and it can also occur because of ovarian hyperstimulation from trophoblastic proliferation. A granulosa cell tumor, this is also called a sex cord stromal tumor, and with granulosa tumors, you're going to have high estrogen and high inhibit levels. So because you have so much estrogen, your GnRH levels are going to be very low. Dystrominomas, this will present with high beta HCG levels, LDH levels, and estrogen levels. If you have an ovarian tumor, you can have elevated testosterone levels and a normal DHEAS because DHEAS comes from the adrenals. So if you have a high DHEAS, then that means you have an adrenal tumor.